what keyword research does is it tells you what your audience are searching for. Then it's like so kind of like reverse engineering it. So instead of producing and hoping that they read your content, you can see what they're searching for and then create content that they're already searching for. So that way you can appear in front of them. And now this solution is sort of a little bit more advanced, right? Than just using sort of the built-in Google search. Uh, yes. So usually uh, when we're doing like the basics, so if I want to introduce keywords to someone, I go through like the Google Keyword Planner because the UI is like more simpler. It's like less, it, it, it just like, it sticks to the necessary details. And these are just like, like you said, it's more advanced and the sorts that you can get more data and analyze how your competitors are doing and maybe like try to beat them in a particular keyword or you know, basically overtake them and rank better. So yeah, that's the, uh, the tool I'll be using today is called Key Search. Uh, it's a really good tool. Like, so I have a legal marketing agency and we've been using it for around like six, seven months now. Uh, it's pretty cool. All right, so this is, so basically you have to log in and this will be if you, in the Google Keyword Planner, you could basically input keywords and also input domain names, but it gives you like an overall ballpark of what keywords that they might rank for. It's So everything's a maybe, right? So I don't like maybes, I like getting solid answers. So what you can do is, so if you go to the Explorer, you can input a domain and find, key, so let's take, Alan, sorry, I'm just finding the domain. So Explorer session is basically, if you have a website and you want to see how they're currently doing, you can just search it up. And I will go over some of the metrics. So yes, domain strength is a score out of 10 and 5.3 is really good. Uh, so like all these like top news websites and stuff like that, they have like eight, like Wikipedia has nine. So a domain score for a law firm of 5.3 is really good. And they're currently ranking for almost like 10 and a half thousand keywords. So this is what people are searching for and estimated traffic goes over how many people visit their website every month. So, so this is like a ballpark once again, because Anything related to Google, only Google knows the real answer, unless you're in the back end of their Google Analytics, you cannot get answers like this. So an estimated traffic is around 86,000. And uh, Will, if you have any questions, feel free to stop. Yeah, me. yeah, oh, I will. Okay, so, and you can see their top competitors based on domain strength and content they produce and keywords that they rank for. It's LinkedIn, it's Instagram, it's this website, the vault and LinkedIn UK. And if like, like I said, this is a more advanced section. So there's this thing called backlinks where if you get a link from a high domain strength website, your website is also determined. So it's basically like a ranking system where if a more powerful guy says, okay, this one is powerful too, you become more powerful. That's what backlinks are and they have 200,000 backlinks and the links that they get from are like uh, domains with high strength. So like I said, LinkedIn has a score of 9.6, Wikipedia, Medium, New York Times. So- uh, Kaushik, so the mm -hmm. LinkedIn, isn't that just them putting out articles on LinkedIn? Yes, so it's like not just people putting articles about Alan Overy on LinkedIn, but it's actually LinkedIn writing about Alan Overy and giving them a link to their website. So that is really good. So it's, it's so this also says that they've been published on like New York Times multiple times about like his particular legal section. So yes, so basically for law firms, uh, the one thing that I have to say if someone from Alan Overy is watching is for 200,000 backlinks, your volume is supposed to be 10 times this number because backlinks are supposed, so that means there, there's a lot of low quality backlinks. That's the assumption that I'm getting from this one. So uh, just, uh, I'll show you another example of like a blog that Ethan and I have. 
So it's not a legal one, but once I want to say why backlinks are can I say bullshit in this call or is that yeah yeah no, <laughs> okay no. uh, backlinks are kind of BS because so Alan Obrey has two hundred thousand backlinks from really high quality websites and this is Ethan Ethan and I so Ethan's my business partner we own a travel blog together so he, we only have thousand backlinks. And we have 132,000 traffic every month. So if you have an SEO agency and they place a lot of importance on backlinks, yeah, so that's a pretty bad agency. <laughs> so yes, focus on putting out content and ranking for organic keywords. And it'll, so you'll get more traffic, so more exposure, more clients. Okay, so just to be clear, so where we're looking at the organic keywords, right? So mm -hmm. cafe culture in Korea, that literally means someone somewhere right. Right, uh, went into Google, typed in cafe culture in Korea, uh -huh. and it directed them to uh, your site. That's correct. Uh, I'll actually show you for a legal website, so it's, it makes more sense. Yeah. So oh, just give me one sec, it's loading. So yes, so basically uh, they're ranking for a lot of keywords which have zero volume, as you can see. So position says their position on like, so when people search for the term A and O, Alan and Overy, I guess, uh, so they appear on the first position, but no one is actually searching for it. So these are like keywords that they should try to eliminate from their website because these have, Tech, so on paper, you might look good for appearing on the first position on Google, but no one's, no, no one's searching, right? It's like, what's the point? So similarly, even if we're, so they're Alan Overy, right? Even when people search for Alan Overy, so they rank number one, obviously, and 27,000 people search it every month, but only 8,000 of those people go to their website. So that's like, a third of the traffic. That's weird. So people are searching Allen and Overy and they see the thing, but they're not going to it. So, so, so let's say when you search, let me actually show it to you, Allen and Overy. So instead of going here, people oh, scroll see. through it and they check this out and mm -hmm. they check this out. So, and they check this out. Instead of people going directly to your website, so they're only going they're going to like other links for that search term. So that is not really good. So that means they're, uh, these descriptions and stuff like that need to be modified because it's not enticing enough for, for people to click on them. You need a more rich snippet, right? Exactly. Do it for the rich snippet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, basically let's take uh, other keywords with higher search volume or let's take so for keywords that they're not ranking number one for, so I can give you like an in-depth analysis. Shit. Okay, there's a lot of keywords. So, so let's take this one, right? So, uh, so there, pen, pension overpayment laws. Um, okay, this doesn't have a lot of. Okay, let's take period of limitation. So let's so they put out an article about this topic, and they're only ranking number four for it. And it has a search volume of 1900. Once again, uh, the volumes are kind of like icky. So a search volume of 1900 says that it's like a minimum 1900 people are searching, but realistically it's more around 3000 people searching for it. So that's something you have to know. So if let's say they want to rank better for this search term. So someone on Google is 1900 people on Google are searching for period of limitation and they only rank number four, and they are only getting, I don't know, like 10% of the traffic, which yeah. is not good. So what they could do is they could write more enticing articles about this and get this to number one and capture maybe 40 or 50% of the traffic. So for a big website with like 80,000 monthly visitors, this may not be a big deal, but let's say you're a smaller mid-sized firm and you only get 2,000 people visiting your website every month. An extra 200, 300 people is a, it's like a lot. It's like a 10% increase. So those are something that people could look for. So 
yeah, basically they rank for 10,000 keywords and I'll go over more on how to approach keywords over here. So the score, so now to the important section. So I took an example for my industry so that because there's more search volume and I'm more familiar with it. But if you uh, will, if you have like a particular search term you want to search for, I can do for that as well. Like data privacy or something. Okay. So I'll talk about what scores are in a bit. Right, okay. So you know, uh, I don't know if you noticed, uh, when we had a look at Alan Overy, they had a score of 47. It was right here. So let, mm -hmm. let, me, uh, let me actually go back so that, oh, I think they had a score of 50, sorry. So their score was 47, just remember that. So what this score means is that, so the higher the score, the more difficult it is to rank for on Google. So if, so someone, so around uh, like 22,000 people are searching for the term data privacy. And this score says that if you were to write an article about data privacy and target for the keyword data privacy, it's pretty difficult to rank for. So Alan Overy is like, had a score of 47 so what they have to do is they have to try to find keywords which have less than 47 so that they can rank for it. Uh, okay. So that's something they have to go for. So let's say they do data privacy. And so all of these scores are, you can, oh, let me refresh them so you get an updated. So since they have a score of 47, if they try to rank for data protection, which has a score of 63, the chances of them ranking on Google for that keyword is pretty low. Just because their website domain is under that. Yes, so like the average score of like, so the average score of the websites that are ranking for are pretty high. So if you look at, so I click the term data protection and on the top search results, like you can see their score. So they're like 63, 77, 68, 83. So they're all pretty up, high up, right? Mm. So what you try to do is if you try to rank for this one, it's very difficult for you to, because there's like people with higher scores here. So it's kind of like difficult to beat them in a way. So yeah. what you could try to do is, so they could try to go for data privacy since their score was 47, and this only has a score of 45, you could write a very in-depth article on data privacy. And th there's a very good chance that they will rank for it on the first page of Google. Mm. Because if you look at data privacy, only one has a score of, only an article from Wikipedia has a score of 74. The rest are all lower than them. Mm. So that means that there's a higher chance of you beating them on Google. I see. So it's basically on Google, it's a competition basis. So what if you put like data privacy lawyer in Australia or something? Oh, like a or, uh, let, let, me, let me do one thing. So now yeah. I have it for all locations, right? Yeah. So let me do data privacy lawyer and I'll just put Australia as an example. So you can see that the search terms are very different because Australia, it's a, well, it's a large country, but the population is lower. Mm -hmm. So uh, once again, for Alan Overy to rank for these keywords, like let's say for a particular region, wouldn't make much sense. But let's say uh, you're a law firm, an Australian firm, and you only get 8,000 visitors per month. Uh, we could try to rank for keywords like 
so these are all like similar keywords that the potential so people searching this term may also search for so that's why so if you have a look at this uh, let's say you only get a thousand people to your website and the score of 90 is more like 160 because the numbers are botched and you write a really good article on privacy lawyer or like, um, let me try to like a pr privacy law firm or so, a cybersecurity law firm. So if you try to rank for that, there's a very high chance that you'd be on the first page of Google and 70 is more like 100. So you're getting maybe an extra five or 10% traffic to your website. So they may not turn into clients, but the more people see your website and content, the more likely they are to become your client or even refer you to someone else. So yeah, uh, Australia, the search volumes are low for this term. So 20 is more like 50. And so it's super easy to rank for this term. All right. So that's what it means. Uh, do you have any more examples? No, could... that's okay. So yes, uh, we can also do like, uh, let, let me do personal injury lawyer. And we can do all of Australia or we could, then I'll do like Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, and you can see what's good. So now this has like more search volume, right? So let's say, someone watching here is from a personal injury firm and you want to rank for the term personal injury lawyer in Australia. It's if your firm score is over like 24, that means this is a very easy term to rank for. Right. So that's basically what it means. And now that you have an idea of, so, so the way you go about content writing is so you have a topic in mind and you wanna see if there are enough interests for that particular topic. So what you would, what a BD manager or someone from the BD team or even a lawyer should do is go to key search, go to the keyword research part, input the term that you want to rank for or your article topic and see if there are enough search volumes and check the score. So if it is easy to rank for, you can go, okay, it's worth writing about it but let's say it's very difficult to rank for, you might want to consider writing another topic because on average, like a good 1500 to 2000 word article takes anywhere between in a, in a BD team, like seven to 10 hours to produce and like for the BD team to correct it when the partners write it. So if there's not enough search volume and not enough people are reading it, I think you just wasted 10 hours. Right. So let's say you do, want to write for this particular topic, like personal injury lawyer. What you can do is go to content assistant. Uh, once again, this is not the best way to look at content, but I would just look at further keywords, but you could like try inputting this. So this is another section that this tool offers. And again, all of this stuff can be exported into Excel and-, and Oh, yes, uh, there was an option. So right here, mm -hmm. uh, you can like save this data. And so let's say uh, you have a BD meeting, right? So with the partners and you wanna say, hey, look, these are the trending keywords that a lot of people are searching for. Maybe you could write an article on this particular topic because there's enough intent. So you could print these out. You can visually show them to like, so when I was at the law firm, I had to convince the partners to write a particular topic. So if you're in a similar situation, having this data will go a long way. Well, yeah, it's very useful, I think, um, because the lawyers are often struggling to find out what to write about. And they usually wait until something has changed mm -hmm. uh, in the legislation to write about it. But here, the BD team can actually proactively go in find, you know, look at each practice group, find some really um, good keywords that are able to get ranked for based on the firm's domain authority, and then present it to the, the, the partnership and say, hey, these are keywords that we should be uh, targeting. And 
um, help me come up with some articles uh, for these topics. Mm -hmm, for sure. And even if uh, you're in a B2B firm, a lot of the searches will be, it's like evergreen content where let's say it's even relevant in a few years, creating content like those from your keyword research will go a long way because your audience are more likely to come to that content and read it again and it's still relevant. So that's how you develop brand loyalty or like to your content. Mm. So let's say we wanna find what people are searching for, for the term personal injury lawyer. Yeah. And these are the common words that people write when they rank for this article. So this is kind of, eh, it's not the greatest, but so this is a very important section because SERPs is basically what pages are currently ranking on Google for the search term personal injury lawyer. So you can see this page, attorney super lawyers, like lawyers, it's a fine law article. So be, basically these are all websites that are ranking for the search term personal injury lawyer. So let's say they wrote a particular article about it. You could try to read and write a different variation of it, but if you have something similar, you can like you can approach the content in multiple ways, is what I'm trying to say. So yes, yeah, so these are some of the things you can go for. And questions, it's not the greatest because it's kind of all over the place. So this could be so you could get potential ideas though. So let's say you're yeah. a personal injury lawyer, you can get in a personal Good. injury lawyer, drop your case. Good or, for uh, inspiration. Oh, for sure. And let's say you want to write an article like, so you're a PI lawyer and you want to write a article on like FAQ or have an FAQ section on your website. These are all like pretty good questions. Like some are shitty, obviously. <laughs> okay, like this one. Yeah. Uh, uh, but some are really good. So yeah, this just gives you an idea of what people are searching for and if it's worth writing about a particular topic. Okay. So, Any other um, tools that we should know about this this product? Uh, oh, that's basically it. Uh, do you Tell have any questions? Tell us about the, the YouTube research one I see there because, you know, a lot of um, law firms are doing more YouTube stuff. So mm -hmm. is this... Uh, Tells us like what sort of tags we can add in or? Actually, uh, I would say that keywords do better than the YouTube research because uh, this, this, okay, from my experience, this tool is not the greatest for YouTube. I'm just gonna say it. So, but it gives you an idea of, hey, look, I wanna write about a particular, make a shoot a video about a particular topic. If you do keyword research here, uh, it will be sufficient and you can just upload it on YouTube. And what does a YouTube research tab do? Uh, I never really dabble into it, but it does give you, it, it's, so it's basically, basically the same. Sort of it's thing. basically the same. Yeah. It's just like, if you don't want to do like in intense keyword research and you just want to focus only the YouTube platform. So this is, sorry, keyword research is all of Google. And YouTube research is just the YouTube platform, even though YouTube belongs to Google. So well, I'm not clear what this tool does more than just Google keyword research, apart from the layout. Like what, what can't you see in, you know, keyword research as opposed to key search? So if you just want to know what the difference is, it's basically uh, if you search for a term such as this one, it gives you a ballpark. So here it gives you a definite number, like let's say 1300, but on a Google Keyword Planner, it'll be like anywhere between 1000 to 10,000. So it really doesn't give you an answer. And some of them have the ranges between 100 to 10,000. So you really, <laughs> yeah. you really don't get an idea of, okay, Hundred to ten thousand. You want to think it's like eight thousand, but it could be on the lower end of the spectrum as well. So you get a more definitive answer on volume. And I don't know if you notice on Google Keyword Planner, you don't get the score option. Yeah. So let's say there is like ten thousand people searching for a particular term. 
if the score is like 70, you're not going to rank for it. So yeah. that's okay. pretty difficult so as well. The score as well. Um, and how is this different than like Hrefs or Moz or oh, oh zones? no, that they're all equally wonderful. Uh, but it's just we've been used. So if you talk to Ethan, he loves uh, Rfs, Hrefs. That one's better than key search. But for me, uh, in terms of usability, because that is more Ahrefs gives you more information on backlinks, which I'm not very fond of. But if you want to do a keyword research on a budget, this is a really good platform because Ahrefs, it's, it's around. It, so like for the first week, it's trial per day. It's like seven dollars. I think for one week, it's seven dollars. After that, it's a hundred bucks. And Moz is like 200, 300 bucks. So in terms of price and it's pretty good. Yeah, I yeah. think there's a month trial or something as well for a key search. Oh yeah, uh, you could definitely try that. It's, uh, I would definitely recommend this because, so let's say uh, when I wanna write an article, so I'm doing it for my business. Uh, so I wanna, let's say I wanna write an art, since I'm a legal marketing agency, I wanna target lawyers, partners, law firms, and BD managers that work in. And I wanna write top an article about local SEO for lawyers. So I could do that. And I'm not ranked, I'm not physically in any particular country. So I'm not opposed to people from all over the world searching for it. And it will give me an answer. It will give me a ballpark so I'm taking you through my step-by-step -step process on how I would write a particular article. So currently on our website, uh, we, uh, we just started publishing content. So our domain score is really low. So any, so we're currently getting around a hundred people per month to our website. So it's really low. Uh, so we're, if I want to rank for the term local SEO for lawyers, so around two, 10 people are searching for it. Even if I get 10%, that's like a lot of, it's like a fifth, it's like a 20% increase in our overall traffic, overall traffic. So I would, so I'm, I'm, so now I look at this and I look at the score and I go, okay, look, this is a pretty good article to write about because there's a lower score and it could, it's easier to rank for it. And what could I potentially write about? So I can, in local SEO for lawyers, I can also cover local SEO for law firms and I can cover local SEO for attorneys if they are any different. These are like, con this is how you see a content idea. So I could also rank for SEO tips for law firms. So this has a low search volume, but let's say someone only wants tips. I can also do that. And they wanna do link building. I can also talk about that in my particular article. So what lawyer, so what BD teams can do is let's say they have a particular, let's say a lawyer wants to write a particular article, the BD team can come up with five to six keywords and give it to the lawyers so that they can go, hey, look, these are what people are searching for. When you're writing this article, if you, if you write the article while keeping this in mind, I think um, you'll get like more return on your time investment. Right. So yeah, this is basically in, overall guide on how to use this platform. Uh, Pretty good. It seems a lot more user friendly than maybe Google ads or Google keyword research and you don't, you know. Oh yeah, um, for sure. And the exporting and score and all that. It's also good to check out competitors to see what your competitor law firms are, are ranking in, what pages they're doing well mm -hmm. on and maybe try and uh, play that the outranking uh, game. Right, for sure. So yeah, if you're definitely into putting active effort into SEO, I would recommend this tool a lot. Awesome. Well, thank you so much uh, for sharing this tool with us. We'll put the links um, in the description below and on the website. And um, anyone who's watching this can get in touch with Kaushik uh, for maybe uh, more detailed information if you have. Absolutely. Uh, you can reach out to me at bailiolegalmarketing.com. If you fill out the contact form, it'll come straight to me. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right.